Hello there folks. I put this lesson together to demonstrate how to sketch antelopes, deers, and similar creatures. In this video we are exploring how to combine gesture, anatomy and form, and animal portrait sketching into some really good solid artworks. So as we get started here, remember that I sped up the film about twice its normal speed. Also there's a lot of information here so feel free to stop the video, take a look at the diagrams and the drawings simultaneously and then refer back and forth to the information that you're getting. So I always try to approximate these videos as I would sketch in the field. Therefore, they're very light at beginning. I'm just trying to get the idea of the implied movement and the general forms and landmarks so I can move on from there and kind of gauge the action that the figure's involved with. Though it's easier to work from a photograph, I don't change my methodology too much when I'm out in the field. I draw it rather light, try to kind of see the implied motion that I'm going to put into the figure, get a good structure in it, and then I start to kind of lay in the anatomy where it comes to the surface. Now this just isn't an academic exercise. A lot of that skeletal anatomy will set onto the surface and you can see those landmarks, those kind of hard high contrast edges poke out every now and then and it helps you really keep track of the proportions and the height and width of your creature. Also instead of copying what you see, it allows you to sort of interpret it and be able to move the creature in more lifelike poses. Uh, some that may just be there for a few seconds, but once you kind of learn the way the pendulums and these forms work in motion, it'll be really easy to reconnect uh, those actions. In fact, if you reference that skeletal diagram to the left, you'll see that I don't really draw the bones, but I interpret them like egg shape for the rib cage, uh, basically kind of a fire hose for the spinal column. I let that framework be rather elastic that way it doesn't become a tedious rendering project but I can move it and stretch it and squash it depending on what my needs are in my drawing. Right now I'm going to jump onto the head and sort of knock out the basic framework and uh, show you where the axis lines are and how that skeleton or skull affects the uh, surface form. Knowing the basis of that information is like really super important because remember the head's about uh, that you know the bony form of the head is about 80 percent of the portrait drawing that you're going to do. It's really going to show up and it, it allow you not to make the figure, the head, too soft. That head will become a focal point in most, most of your drawings, so it is a central portion of the idea of learning how to do that and learning that structure. got enough of that framework of the head done so now we're going to move back to the uh, muscle forms of the body. Now you don't have to be an anatomical expert to draw animals but having some basic knowledge to be able to recognize and build form will take your animal drawings to a whole higher level. I've mentioned in previous videos how the idea of muscles they can only pull they cannot push. So a really good thing to keep in mind is dynamic form is dynamic masses so as the animal moves uh, those muscles are going to get uh, larger on one side and uh, longer on the other side. The basic animator's trick of squash and stretch. But at first I really don't get caught up in the anatomy. I think of it as like basic tubes and blocks, uh, pyramids. And then when I put the muscles on, I also simplify them into groupings. Uh, that way as I build them up, they don't uh, fall into little tiny pieces of diagram, but they become solid forms that overlap one another. You know, doing all of this while the animal's moving is hard enough. That's why I take those forms, instead of making them more complicated, even though I have the knowledge of it, I simplify them down into basic building blocks I can organize and wrap my tired and confused brain around. To remind everybody that this is kind of built around quick sketch ideas. And you can see as I put the anatomy in, I sort of accent where the border of the bigger muscle forms are and where the bones come out to the surface with sharper, more angular lines. Also hinting at where the bigger muscle groups are with those uh, shadow shapes and a little bit of core shadows. Anatomically, one important point that I always try to keep in mind is just about below the elbows and the kneecaps, uh, what you do is you get mostly bone and mostly tendon all the way down to the hooves. So you're going to get some really straight lines, but at the same time you're going to get the angularity that's going to be at those joints. Now I'm coming back in and reinforcing more of the form, even a little bit of the idea of the uh, fur markings on it. But even that, you notice those little cross hatching marks are going around the masses. I'm not just putting it in as decoration. I'm using those marks to kind of define and sculpt 
the forms that I'm trying to uh, get a hold of right there. One point I find lacking in a lot of people's drawings are the idea of the hoofs or the feet. Uh, they never quite look like they touch the ground a lot of times. A lot of beginning artists draw them uh, rather rounded, sort of like if the animal is wearing socks. Instead, I'll draw them this way. Very triangular. Uh, make sure that the bottom part lays flat on the ground. Uh, these are elk's feet, which are slightly different than the deer that I'm drawing. But you get the general idea and you can morph it into another form. So an important point to remember when you're watching this is I usually don't leave the head towards the end of the drawing. I work the whole drawing up simultaneously so I can compare and contrast the information that I'm putting down on the page. That's an elk's head on the uh, diagram to the left. And though these share a lot of similarities, you can also see there's differences. The elk's head's a little bit uh, thicker up by the eyes. Uh, the ears are a little bit smaller. Definitely the uh, rack, the antlers on top are much bigger. Uh, but you can still see some of the same landmarks appearing on both drawings. You can see the same attributes at that gear nook, which is on the left. That's an African antelope. It's a smaller deer-like animal, but it has more of an oblong head, a much thinner, smaller sort of muzzle on it. But as I break down the uh, diagram to the left, you can see some of the main points. Just the eyes are larger, the mouth is smaller, uh, the ears are about the same size. Next it comes up is this deer-like antelope uh, from Africa called the uh, water buck. And once again, you can see I broke it down to uh, sort of a elongated ball, uh, a squarish sort of muzzle in the front, uh, making sure the uh, ears have sort of a triangular look, and even inserting those curving antlers uh, into the top of the head. So in getting back to the deer, now what I'm doing is using the black colored pencil to kind of reinforce the focal points where the overlaps are uh, where the ears are going to insert into the head, um, a little bit more roundness on the eye and the socket, uh, even picking up a little bit of the markings and the fur patterns. So the drawing on the right I came up with is just about what happens when I go out into the field and draw uh, the actual animal. Not too much detail, try to keep the action as clear as possible and not overwork it. So next I'm going to be sketching this uh, light and sprightly Gernuk from Africa. Perhaps you'll notice that in the gesture, I've already moved the neck, I'm moving the head down, I'll probably readjust the legs a little bit. Being able to judge the proportions and what the action of the animal does in relationship to the anatomy is really important because I can be very much more inventive rather than just copying uh, either the photograph or what I assume goes on at the zoo when I see it in person. In this drawing, I kind of reversed the process from the last one. I drew the form of the body and the neck, and then I sort of draped the legs around over the top of it, and then made sure that they hit the ground in the right proportion. When you look at the uh, diagram to the left of that larger antelope, uh, you'll see the same process, but in a different proportion and a different angle. But look how I definitely make sure that the feet hit the ground plane, and that there's a sort of an implied movement and definitely a balance to it so the animal doesn't look like it's falling over. It's really on a solid ground base. I'm sure this concept's a little weird to wrap your head around. It certainly is mine, but I do change those forms into simple building blocks, literally blocks and tubes. Uh, again, just like I said before, just so I can kind of wrap my head around it and make sure that everything overlaps and the proportions and the perspective is correct. This really counts when the animal's in movement because they jump a lot and they're very, very active and very fluid. So to be able to take those forms and kind of piece the solid uh, sections together with the elastic uh, ideas of the joints and the tendons and the muscles is like a really important thing to uh, make your drawings much stronger to the eye. And as they twist and turn in space, it'll make your drawings much more believable and give you much more confidence as you draw them. My focal point has been the back end of the creature with that leg lifting and the form getting together there, but now I'm gonna move on to the head. Once again, keeping a gestural brief, uh, a basic layout just so it'll match the rest of the drawing. Though those are deer heads in the diagram to the left, from different angles, 
I put them in there because I wanted you to see the similarities to the Gurnex head, uh, that overhead view, before I put the antlers on. On the left, I added uh, some ink drawings, fountain pen drawings of some uh, envelope heads on the left-hand side so you can see the texture and the focal points and overlaps even down into the uh, patterning on the antlers. Though I usually don't get into that kind of uh, detail in my gesture drawings, all the same, it's very important to know that uh, if you're abbreviating it on a longer, say, portrait drawing. So I thought I'd put down some drawings and show you how I design a page when I go to the zoo and draw. Uh, usually, again, most of the time when I'm drawing, I'm sometimes putting up to four or five drawings per page. So frequently I have to combine things like, uh, say, animals that have more of a mass, like elephants with thinner animals. Uh, again, they stretch out more when they jump and they move, especially since we're dealing with deers and antelope. And so I have to kind of look at those open spaces and be able to do things like even draw little portraits or animals that are standing or laying down, and then look for areas to sort of fit all of these uh, uh, drawings into one little space here. It's definitely more like putting a puzzle together, but it is good because what you're doing is you're using an economical amount of materials and uh, not spending a lot of time going through a lot of pages of a sketchbook. Now the really important little idea to keep in mind is that you can do these like little abbreviated one or two minute long drawings and then set up the framework and be able to go back into them later if you need to and use photographic reference to kind of, I wouldn't say fill them in or finish them, but to give them a little bit more uh, information, which will make the viewer more understand the action and the body parts in relationship to the gesture that's going on. Because it does get a little bit abstract sometimes. At this point, you can see how I'm really using that idea of those egg shapes and boxes to uh, keep everything in line and uh, keep the proportions all set up. And then when I do attach anatomical information to it, it's got a really solid base to hang off of. Now I'm going to add this uh, camel to the mix here. And since it's a profile view and the uh, animal re really isn't jumping around, it's more about form, even about silhouette and uh, more shape design, making sure that I keep the proportions uh, pretty clear. So perhaps you'll notice when I set the legs up, they're just lines with a couple of little landmarks for where the ankles and where for the knees are, and even the feet. As I move into the uh, head here, uh, one of the basic things I'm using here is the structure of a giraffe head. It's really similar in a lot of ways. And so that way I'm become, like I said before, my approach is very elastic. And I do have that structure to kind of hang on to, to organize my thoughts better. Also keeping my eye roving around the composition to make sure that that head matches uh, the rest of my drawing rather than becoming separate and therefore ruining the entire drawing. Now, camels really aren't uh, antelope or deer, and I just included them in here because I like to draw them. And uh, of course the body forms about the same. So I brought the uh, feet in and feet I find to be very strange on these animals. They appear to be on, almost like bedroom slippers with cow catchers sticking out of the front of them. It's a unique blend of uh, very soft and rounded forms with very sharp angles. So I very much take that into account as I'm uh, drawing that from the diagrams there. That I do want to get the overlaps and I still, even though it may be sand or rock that they're standing on, I still want to get them standing on that ground solidly. So in this drawing of this gear nook right here, what I'm doing here is that I'm twisting the neck to make it sort of fit the design of the page more. Uh, again, I'm not so much into copying, but taking the photograph as an inspiration or even the animal doing what it's doing at the zoo because this will only take place for maybe a minute, a couple of minutes top before it gets tiring and then hits back to the ground. So I want to concentrate on that action in a very short-handed, uh, action-filled manner. If you just use a simple deconstruction process, you can see there's a box for the pelvis, an egg for the rib cage, and a tube for the neck. Even just a triangle for the head. So we hearken back to that uh, giraffe skull and the giraffe uh, layout that I did in a previous video, combined with the deer I did in this one. And so this is again in a gear here uh, that I'm drawing and laying out here. And you can see the orb for the head, and then I'm sort of constricting the muzzle a little bit. 
definitely making sure I get the access lines to line up the eyes. Uh, but at the same time, I'm trying to keep that really quick gestural kind of line build up to it. Uh, that way it'll match the rest of the drawings. Plus, it'll match the idea that if I am drawing this at the zoo, my hand is moving very quickly and making quick, organized sketching decisions that will come together in a final concept. After a little quiet time, I'm uh, much more comfortable about the decisions I made. So I'm, now I'm accenting things like even the whites of the eyes. Personal decision I always make is I always try to put the eyes on the inside of the socket, that bony area around the eye and under the eye where the cheekbone is. Uh, it really helps give the uh, creature a lot more of a personality uh, rather than just a flat uh, billboard-like appearance. Here's a facsimile page of uh, perhaps uh, a page or a double set of pages of drawings done at the zoo. And at this point in the demo, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw this larger antelope and let the camera roll because basically it's the information that I've uh, doled out already. Uh, but there's more of an attention to larger forms and making sure that animal really, really stays, sticks on the ground with the center of gravity over the front of his chest. A lot of shape language decisions, a lot of overlapping, a lot of just really sort of flat decisions just to make sure everything works out on the page right before I start getting into anatomical details. quick little note here is that since it's a back view and this animal has a pretty strong jaw and that neck's a little bit narrower, it fits into that, uh, let us just say this, that box in the back of the head. And you can see the neck, the trachea of it also fitting in underneath that jawline, giving it a lot more sort of overlapping form. And you can see the same thing when it comes to the belly, when it comes to the uh, front legs and even the back legs and even putting the horns and antlers in. I really stick them in there so the idea that you can get an idea of the form across the animal, not just the flatness on the side view. Now before I finish this uh, video on antelope and deer here, I wanted to do a larger antelope creature. This is a bongo, and it's got a much square jaw, much more rectangular sort of form that goes, uh, sort of narrows down by the top of the nose and then comes out to a more squarish area, triangular area in the muzzle with these large ears. 
And so as I put it together, we'll use the same uh, techniques and the same methodologies that we've used previously, uh, but use, I'm using that uh, red pencil to sort of map it out and uh, put it together. And then the, the blue sort of represents more uh, the anatomical stuff. But I want to make sure the symmetricality is there um, at the same time, give it an individuality so it's just not uh, equal on both sides. Um, coming up and overlapping the horns. So you can see it's like I'm really designing it first. And I do that when I'm, I'm actually drawing the animal out uh, at the zoo or at a way station or whatever, is I want to make sure that everything lines up correctly so things don't get out of whack. And here's a real simple diagram that I think I used earlier to show you uh, the layout. But this animal diagram on the left has much more of a rounded jawline as opposed to the uh, uh, bongo that has much more of a rectangular shape. Now I'm going back all the way to the uh, first demo we did on the head drawing and using that skull as a base uh, along with the measuring. So I'm putting in the cheekbones, I got the zygomatic arch, I'm getting ready to put the eyes on the inside of it, uh, building up the muzzle and the lower part of the mouth, even making sure that the musculature is for the chewing is in the right place. Pulling the, uh, as you can see here, I'm bringing in the ears. Again, diagrammically, they kind of, the ears fit into like almost like cap bottle tops. Uh, so again, they don't just are, look like they're pasted onto the head. They look like they grow out of the head and they're attached to the head in a natural way. That way it makes it much more volumetric and a lot more uh, lively and believable. I must admit that the line's getting a little bit heavier than perhaps it would be if I was drawing this uh, out in the wild. Uh, but again, it's for a demo, and I'm trying to show you things like the angularity of that jawline, uh, the way that the lower mouth sort of angles off. You don't want it parallel. You want to, again, get that more natural uh, look to it where stuff isn't quite uh, symmetrical all the time. There's a brow bone I'm building up, sort of putting a little bit of shading underneath it readjusting the eyes a little bit. So yes, it does have its diagrammical uh, uh, parts to it. But as I said before, this is 100% of the information. And frequently, you're not going to have the time to be able to put all of this down. You'll have to abbreviate it and perhaps just use a small fraction or percentage in the field sketch. Now, the farther we get along in this drawing, I'm going to bring up an actual uh, sketch that I did at the zoo of a bongo. And you can see the cross hatching, the light logic on it, and see how it does follow that anatomical information that I put down there. I want to make sure that you know that I'm uh, using mostly line in this so I don't obliterate uh, all of the decisions I've made uh, just for the sake of putting a uh, texture pattern, markings, uh, fur, or light logic on it. Often when I'm drawing an animal, you can see that the uh, color or texture patterns obliterate a lot of the information. 
So the muzzle's like really super dark and black. But when I draw one of these animals, uh, whether it's big cats or uh, antelope, deer, or anything that has a dark marking to it, so I always pay more attention to the light. And so I have a tendency to keep the top of the head lighter and then fill in the darkness or even the markings on the side of the animal where the shadows are. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and previous videos. All of these and a lot more techniques and illustrations are included in two animal drawing books that I wrote and illustrated. There's a lot of techniques and methodologies on wild and domestic animals included in both books. So in closing, I'd like to thank you very much for watching the video and there's previous videos and please feel free to uh, subscribe to my channel, Gary Draws and Paints, and look through the uh, library of different kind of videos that I put together all the way from uh, figure, animal, landscape, and even form and vehicle drawing. Thanks a lot and goodbye. Adios.